All right. Wrong song, Paul. Wrong song. That is uh, Empire of the Sun and We Are the People. Paul picked the wrong song, Jimmy. I was uh, I was uh, hanging around my house yesterday, and that damn Honda commercial came on, and they uh, they have a song in it. And I'm like, man, I want to play that to start the show. So I looked up the whole thing, and I, I, I realized it was a band called Empire of the Sun. I'm not even going to make believe I knew the band. And uh, I'm like, oh, Walking on a Dream. Very cool. We should play that to start the show. So then I told Paul. Paul is like, oh, I know that band. Sure, no problem. And then he he, he, he picked We Are the People, saying that was, that was the one from the fucking commercial. Paul is notorious for musical errors. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jimmy's like, just stop the song and just play the one you want. Yeah, stop it. Just that's You know, we could just stop it and play it. And his excuse is, that's a better song. But that's not the point. The point is, I, I got turned on to this song that's in a Honda commercial, and I wanted to play it for for everybody Damn. today. Paul's known for calling an audible. A lot of times, <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, that was all right, but it, I don't know. Song. Walking on a dream. Now I'm going to have to play that tomorrow. That means two days in a row with Empire of the Sun. Yes, Paul. Walking on the dream's a nighttime song. Oh. He's fantastic on the radio, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, Paul's good. I don't know. I want to know if it's if he's accurate or not, though. Is it a nighttime Why song? Why is it a nighttime song? You can't just start the concept it's, and walk it's in away. It's the title, Walking on a Dream. Oh well, you can uh, you can people day daydream, daydream. Yeah, you know that's true. That's what makes me so charming. But it's I'm morning. always looking to the future. And it's morning, huh? It's morning. What? It's morning. Yeah, oh which God. is part of the day. Yeah. This guy's got mic skills, man. Paul's He's amazing. Good. Yeah, He's fucking amazing. <laughs> Walks right in. <laughs> and if you would have watched the video, you would see that they filmed the whole thing during the day, so they're not thinking it's a nighttime dream. Why don't, See, hear, why don't we hear the beginning of the song? Nah. I, I'm, now I'm curious. Really? I'm, I'm just curious. You know the song. It's in this Honda commercial. Oh. Ooh. It's a very strange video. It has 39 million views on, on the YouTube. Nice little beat. You like this? I like it's it. It's like the end of every 80s movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. It's a good one. Much better, right? Much yeah, better. yeah, I like it. I have not heard it. Who's the guy? Who's he supposed to be? The guy. Is he dressed know. up as somebody? Uh, yeah. some, the guy from Devo, if he fucked Boy George. Thrill of it. It's a good song. See how much this is way more catchy than start a radio show. All right, we'll save that for tomorrow. <laughs> good one. Can we, play the, can we play the 1877 cars for kids? <laughs> yeah, we can do that too. RS cars for, for kids. kids. Do you know that band Empire of the Sun there, Chris? Uh, no. Chris doesn't know music whatsoever. Or I, he doesn't know our music. Our, but th this song, I've definitely heard that song before. But if you would have played it, I would have been like a thousand percent I've heard it. But I couldn't. Yeah, yeah, I would have never. It's in a Honda commercial. It's a Honda commercial. Honda's getting a, a free plug right now. I'm a free a commercial. I'm a Toyota guy. You're a Toyota, Toyota guy. Toyota guy. I've been driving a Corolla. Then I stepped up to Camry. Right. Then Were I you a fucking Uber driver? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Re you read about me in the papers today. Um, and then, uh, but now I, went, now I got a Jeep. Oh, I, I went I Honda. Them. Honda yeah. Accord was my first real car. That's that nice. I, that I bought myself. Right. Hatchback. Right. I missed that damn thing. Yeah. You... I drove it into the ground until the engine seized. I can't, even though I, you know, I, I, those, those cars are good. The Japanese cars are good. I, I figured I have to start driving American. You have an to? American. Yeah. Because I was like, I got, I'm not supporting. I'm not going to, I got to support us. That's how I felt about it. Well, That's silly. I know. It's a stupid well, thing. Well, someone's voting for Trump in this room today. Yo, oh, yeah. Trump's going to bring all the jobs back. Trump's going to make this country perfect. We're going to start winning again. We are. Trump uh, is going to fucking be the nom nominee. That is pretty obvious now. I He's got so. a huge lead in Nevada, and you got Rubio and Cruz just fighting it out. One of those guys has to drop out for them to have a chance of defeating Trump. Well, Carson is still in it, right? Yeah, but I mean, how many how many people are still following Ben Carson? No, but I mean, but why isn't he just wasting money? Like, if you aren't you just giving up? I yeah, I don't, I, I honestly don't know what that's about because you got John Kasich, who I kind of like, uh -huh. uh, but he he's not he doesn't have a lot of lot of. Uh, a lot of heat, and Ben no. Carson doesn't have a lot of heat. So why are those guys in there? I have no. They clue. just like the attention. That or I think do they maybe hope that one of the main candidates royally fucks up and has to has drop an aneurysm? Out? Yeah, it's something. Yeah, I I, I I guess, but I mean they're way behind.
Because yeah. even if, let's say, something happens to Trump and he drops out or, or like, well, I mean, what's going to happen to Trump? He's, he's, he's done and said everything and it doesn't affect him. Yeah. No. But let's say he has to tap out for whatever reason. Then there's still two guys that are way ahead of uh, Ben Carson and John Kasich. But one of those guys has to d drop out. It's, it's I hope it's because of natural causes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope nature makes the decision for one of them. I don't care which one. Well, good I'm, chest grab. <laughs> oh my God! Fuck him. A solid chest grab. <laughs> yes. one, Jesus. One of, my, my one of my I know this guy um, who's a comedian in London, and he said like in London the whole he, all, the whole comedy scene all they do is make fun of America because of how far Trump's gone. He said so even if he loses, he's like in at least England it feels like oh. your damage is done. Where we're there, they're just he's like we just abuse you for that. Yeah, I'm like, well, well, you're still England, so shut your fucking exactly. mouth. Yeah, but uh, this is Trump's. <laughs> this is Trump's to lose. Now. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. know how he loses it because uh, he's he's he has made fun of everybody. Yeah, but there you have it. How is everybody doing? I would love him to win just to annoy the rest of the world. Yeah, That's really. The, that kind of attitude is kind of why. Yeah. What's one of the things I like about him is it was just annoy everyone. Right. Yeah. I got yeah, I got to be honest. Like when when this guy was like he was just having fun, you know, he was just texting me. But when he started to like really shit on America because of Trump, I was out to be like, yo, shut the fuck up. Me and Donald Trump will come over there, <laughs> you and Donald, huh? <laughs> and I'll take my Jeep Grand Cherokee across the Atlantic Ocean and shit in your mouth. <laughs> shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> It's, I would have said, yeah, why don't you go have tea and crumpets? You know, yeah, hit him with some local hit stuff. Hit him with that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, carry on. Yeah. Hit him where it hurts. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Who are you, Maggie Thatcher? <laughs> you know, hit him with a new political... Oh, up. you bloke. <laughs> I don't know. I'm oh, sorry. I think Cruz uh, fires his uh, communications director. Why? Because uh, Cruz is dirty. Did the guy Dirt did bag. something, though? Didn't the guy do something fucked yeah, up? Yeah, he did. But, I mean, you know, he's working for Cruz. And Cruz just seems like a, uh, he's dirty. What did the guy do? Yeah, uh, was that a Photoshop? No, they released the story on the website. On their website, there's a, been a few things though. There was also a bad Photoshop, right? Which was part of the the Cruz campaign. Where I think it's, help me out. I think it was Rubio uh, shaking the hand of Obama, but it's obvious that the heads were like put on the picture. Yeah. Or, can you find that story, Why would he please? Do that? It's so dumb. Huh? Why, Why is that a problem if Rubio shook Obama's hand? I, I don't know. Well, what do you got in this, Eric? Uh, yeah. One of the, the things that they were fired. We're talking about Rick Tyler. Yeah, clearly. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that uh, <laughs> distributed a video that falsely depicted Marco Rubio dismissing the Bible. Right, right. That was uh, the latest one. But please try to find yes. the one with the Photoshop picture, too. Yeah. Oh, is that the one where. If that's what these assholes are fighting about. What do you mean? One dis one dismissed the Bible. Oh, yeah, but it wasn't true. I think the video had like uh, subtitles or something, and the subtitles weren't right. That's exactly it. Did he say something like uh, "I look like a good book" or something? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. But it the was... Rubio Obama trade pact. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, they then... didn't pose for that photo. All right. And they're shaking. They're each shake. That's so First of weird. All, they're no shaking it, with the wrong hand. Yeah, yeah. lefty handshake. Terrible. Even lefties shake with the right hand, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't do it. But in this picture, they they're both shaking with their left hand, and then uh, I, I think I, I heard that their the heads aren't right. That they were photoshopped so on stupid. other people's fucking bodies or something like that. And they should have reverse imaged it and made it shake right handed. Yeah, that's just very silly. That was another one of the problems. Uh, but they, they also. Yeah. They also claimed, after there was controversy, that the photo was real. I am confident that our campaign would not use a photo that is not authentic. How, how do you look at that photo and think it's real? Teddy Schleifer was uh, towing the company line. That was what Teddy, <laughs> Teddy, Teddy Schleifer, Schleifer, Schleifer was that doing. That is such a Schleifer move. <laughs> it really <laughs> is. Teddy well, Schleifer is always a guy who will fucking uh, yeah. stick up for the campaign. Well, you know, Schleifer's him. is good. What a Schleifer hole. Yeah. 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 Fucking Teddy Schleifer. I don't like Teddy Schleifer. Teddy Schleifer's loyal that, if he's not. That he's sounds like else. a Jim Norton character. Yes. Teddy Schleifer. Teddy Schleifer. Teddy Schleifer. Hey, it's about the campaign, man. It's about the campaign. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And they actually found the original photo. Uh, uh, that's the original that's photo? The original photo. So, so what? Two they, guys shaking with their right hands. But then they reversed the image. Terrible. To make them uh, shaking with their left hands. Well, no I one does that. In the uh, African-American gentleman's on the wrong side in the original photo, so they flipped it. Why, why would he be on the wrong side? Why would the president have to be on the right side of the frame? Yeah. Why would they flip it to do that? And I don't know. But it's that's so the original silly. photo. 
Ash Schleifer, so don't ask me. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe they feel the left eye grabs something first. Yeah, maybe they want their yeah. Who, who, I mean, no one shakes with their left hand. Not at all. But can you do like like why is it such a big deal that he's shaking like the the, pr it's the not. president just because he's a Republican versus a Democrat and they and he's well that's why I uh, it, although I watch this shit every single night I hate it because these guys just cannot acknowledge the other side. It's ridiculous. I fucking hate that they don't want to acknowledge the other side. They don't want to work with the other side. That's the biggest problem in this whole fucking country. Also, could you imagine? Like, you can't do this in Russia. Could you imagine these? Like, you were you were like posting pictures of of you shaking hands with Putin, and then that was like a bad thing. They'd fucking kill you. Right. You can't mm -hmm. do that. Well, good old Teddy Schleifer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm confident that our campaign would not use a photo that is not authentic, and then they find the original picture. <laughs> Way to go, Teddy. Uh, I got a stunt brain. I told him to call in because he, he wrote me yesterday about that Reagan thing that we were trying to figure out. Uh, is that you, stunt brain? It is. Good morning. All right. I didn't see your name on the, on the, on the screen, but there you are. How are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. You guys, uh, side total sidebar. Yeah. The song you played to open the show, the Honda song. Yeah. It sounds like MGMT kids. That's thank you, and that's what I said to some of the guys around here this morning. I heard that during the Honda commercial, and I like MGMT, and I'm like, do they have you know new music out? And and so then I did a little search, and I realized it wasn't MGMT. It was a band called Empire of the Sun. And then I'm like, let's play Walking on a Dream, and then stupid Paul picks We Are the People. <laughs> well, it, uh, I don't know about your internal struggle. <laughs> just like, just like MGMT to me. Well, there was a whole thing behind the reason why I picked that song. And then Paul's like, oh, I know that. And then tells Travis the wrong song. Paul's so panicking. we're talking about the people who rule the world for the presidential campaign. There's your tie in. Dude, he's amazing. That's, that's good. That's more of a nighttime song. We fucking need to get Paul him does kind of come in. He fucking whispers a little knowledge and he goes back. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I respect like that. that. <laughs> Comes in, he drops a little science and he fucking heads yeah. back to his chair. It's uh, the weirdest thing. He just says something like Jimmy said and then he walks away from the mic. Why Why wouldn't you want to have a conversation? This is talk radio. Yeah, the, man, conversation's you, oh, man, the conversation's over. The conversation's over. It's man, not a words. conversation. Okay. The conversation's <laughs> over. Okay, Don't I'm be done. confused. I like I like Paul a lot. Thank, anyway, stump break. Thank, thank you. Yep. So help us out. So you got uh, the communications director. He had to step down. Basically, Cruz told him to step down or you're going to be fired. And that's not a good thing for his campaign whatsoever this late in the game, right? Yeah, it's tough, especially when Rubio and Cruz are fighting for that spot to uh, face off against Trump. Because that's really what it's down to. You guys were talking about it. If anyone's going to have a chance against Trump, they need to consolidate all the votes, all the votes underneath them. Yeah. For the establishment uh, candidate. Right. And yeah, and that's the key right now. And especially Nevada's going to be nuts. This this dumb caucus that they're doing today. Uh, Nevada's only done it uh, a couple of times this early. And I think the GOP is going to take it away from him. The last couple of times they've done it, the Ron Paul people have staged an internal coup. And I'll, almost oh, an Esther the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> an Esther coup. <laughs> Good stuff, but so. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're I'm, welcome. I'm not a fan of the caucus. The caucus means that you have to stand up and tell everybody who you're voting for, right? Yeah, and people can a little change, change their votes. You know, in Iowa, they move from one side of the room to the other. People stand up. It is strange, mm -hmm. and they're just uh, Nevada's ripe for all kinds of shenanigans, and we might see something today. Ooh. But Trump has a huge lead, and he's going to win the caucus out there in Nevada. Yeah, pretty much. He should he should have that no problem there, and uh, you know, going ahead, he should he looks like he could run the table Good. if things don't consolidate underneath him. So Rubio or Cruz has to drop out, and, and neither one of those guys uh, is willing to do that. Their egos are in the way. Yeah, right now it is. Unless they say, hey, we'll figure out who will be the VP candidate down the road. Let's just, let's just get this together. But you also have Carson and Kasich, as you guys were talking about, who you don't know what they're staying in for. Carson, it just seems spiteful at this point. He's mad at Cruz for what happened in Iowa, and he's not leaving. But aren't they running out of money? Isn't it a money uh, thing after a while? It is for uh, Kasich. Uh, believe it or not, Carson has a ton of money behind him. There's an old evangelical group that's been donating just consistently to Carson. He I believe if you have the skill to operate on a baby's brain while the baby's still in the mother's stomach, 
you have to have a lot of money in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> I would assume that means lots of cash. And, and lots of people think that skill is worth donating to. Mm. And there's a CPAC conference in D.C. next week. It's conservative political action. Oh, no. Uh, I, I, took a, I took a Z-Pack took a, yeah. to get over the flu. I, I need a Z-Pack. I've taken them for other reasons. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> 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 Would you Just like to share it with the room, Jimmy? I think the room understands. <laughs> <laughs> it's exhausting, all these things. The C-Pack the the and the Super Pack. Oh, why don't they all just stop it? What? They keep it complicated. Well, yeah, what's the difference between a C-Pack and a Super Pack? A C-Pack is a conference. It's actually oh, okay. a gathering of conservatives. Oh. All the candidates will be there speaking to uh, oh. the faithful. So yeah. It's a it's a gigantic event and it'll uh, it'll have all of them. Even some of the ones who dropped out are going to be there, and the, I guess they'll start endorsing people. I think if people could uh, respect a guy that's staying in the race because he's spiteful. I like that. <laughs> I kind of yeah. like Ben Carson now for doing that. Yeah, he's kind of dug in. A Kasich, I think, is there to um, to flex the strength of Ohio because you have to win Ohio to win the country, mm. and he's yeah. beloved in Ohio. He's not going to win his own state probably. But he he can deliver it to whomever ends up being the candidate. So maybe sitting there going, look, as soon as one of you guys tell me I'm going to be your VP, I'll, I'll drop out for you. It kind of feels that way. And and Trump, well, last night when he was talking about wanting to punch the guy in the face, Trump's going to need <laughs> what, what, what was that one about? Uh, there was a protester being led out of his event. Yeah. And he was like, get him out of here. Get him out of here. I'd like to punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> is that presidential? <coughs> that's what a lot of people are struggling with. They're like, is yeah. that presidential? Do we do we want a president that's going to say, I want to punch that guy in the face? Well, two weeks ago, he said he could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and not lose any. You know what? That, that went away quickly, too. That one. That's crazy. Do you know what Trump should have said to the guy? He should have said, somebody, that guy's fired. Should have fired him. Fired. you fired. you fired. fired. I would have said that if I was him. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and who's Trump going to pick as a running mate? Are you starting to hear names over there at TheBlaze.com? Um, it, it looks like there's a there's a secondary sweepstakes. People like like uh, Kasich are, are self-nominating. It feels like it to me. But Trump could do anything totally out of the ordinary because it seems like the the party's mad. All the people don't want an establishment candidate. And maybe that means Trump goes totally out of it and does a Stockdale move like you were talking about yesterday, and he brings somebody from outside of the process as well. How about Sarah Palin? Yeah. I mean, I'm, just throwing her, I'm just throwing her hat in the ring. Yeah, that would go over well. <laughs> so I, I don't think there's a second bite of the Palin apple. I think her speech Ugh. killed it. When she, was, uh, when she was up there and he had to stand there for 20 minutes while she yammered on, yeah. I, I think he then decided I, this is was she stand, Was she talking about 20 minutes? Yeah, yeah I, that was I, a lot. I, I believe with everything that Trump has done in this campaign, that his biggest mistake was uh, aligning himself with Sarah Palin. He didn't have to do that shit. Yeah. And you have not seen her since that day, have you? No. no. Hey, uh, I, I started telling people I like John Kasich, so then got attacked on Twitter. People were saying uh, he has something to do with Planned Parenthood. He, he, he dropped funding or something like that in Ohio. Is that true? Yeah, he signed legislation in Ohio yesterday that partially defunds Planned Parenthood, uh, and th that was from the House. The Ohio, uh, the Ohio government sent up the legislation. He signed it. So there will be no Ohio money going to Planned Parenthood in that state. They can still get federal money. Well, I'm a fan of the, the women getting their snatches checked out, so that's mm -hmm. not a good thing uh, that Kasich did that, right? Well, it, it only removes funding for abortions. It doesn't remove funding for women's health issues. Well, I mean, you got to allow the girls to have an abortion or two. It happens. I get that's the just part of, thing, That's just part of growing up, right, yeah. Chris? I, I'd say so, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of people get abortions. I don't think you should take that away. I don't like when they use it for birth control, but, I mean, you gotta you got to allow that option. It beats these little monsters running around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if that's what you want to do, do it. Fucking, Fucking kids. Christ. Yeah. I'm sick of it. Well, uh, that makes me not like Kasich as much. I'll be honest with you there, stunt brain. And then... Well, he could have vetoed it, but they probably had the votes to um, override the veto as well. Right. So he played to his base and uh, yeah. kept that right on through. Hey, uh, uh, somebody wants to know why the blaze is so anti-Trump. You guys are anti-Trump over there? No, my boss happens to be anti-Trump. 
Glenn Beck. Yeah, he's he has come out, uh, and you know he doesn't control the editorial lean of the blaze. He just owns the thing. Uh, he's come out publicly for Cruz first time in his thirty years in broadcasting. He's endorsed a candidate, but we oh, don't. That's embarrassing. We don't Glenn endorse Beck a candidate is, at all. Glenn Beck shouldn't be endorsing Ted Cruz. Well, they're friends. So uh, they think yeah. they're friends. Now, if I had a friend running, I got to be honest, I'd vote for him. If I had a friend running, I'd push for him. Should I have a friend who's the president? But you should question why he's your yeah. friend. Maybe, but after he loses, you yeah. don't do that while he's almost. You know, if you think he might have a shot at winning, I'd believe me. Yeah, I'd buddy up with anyone who might be president. <laughs> buddy up. <laughs> well, we're pretty close to the Trumps in a way. We have the we have uh, the son in here a lot, and and we've had Donald on the phone. We almost became friends with them. I'm friendly with Donald Jr. <laughs> yes, and he's he, they did me a big solid when I needed something checked out. They helped me a lot. And but he's Donald. Invited me. I don't know well at all. The, the father I've met uh, two or three times, and he wouldn't know me if I said hi. I'm Jim Norton. He'd go, "Hi, nice to meet you," and he'd keep walking. Right. <laughs> but the son, I mean, that's close enough. He wants to take me shooting. He wants to me to like shoot things with yeah. him. I just can't shoot things. I don't shoot. One of those kids is on a shooting team with uh, Gunny, you know, the gunnery sergeant. And he said... Uh, wait, Gunny, Gunny the, the gunnery, gunnery sergeant? Oh, thank God that worked out. <laughs> um, <laughs> so wait, what is Gunny? Which one is Gunny? The guy from the Geico commercials. Uh, not from Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, what, yeah, the, yeah. The, the Oh, Arlie Ermey. Yeah, oh. Arlie Ermey is on Arlie, a shooting right. team with one of Trump's kids. And he says the kid is ridiculously good. So that must be uh, Junior. Yeah. Because he's yeah. always talking about shooting. Yeah, he was. He finally got down. I think the kid had good aim. And he goes, we finally found something you do well. <laughs> but he's, he's supposed to be just a crack shot. So oh. that's... Uh, uh, he just go shooting with him. Hey, why aren't you stopping Private Trump's guts out? <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, and you guys were talking yesterday about the I paid for this microphone thing. Uh, the Reagan oh, thing from 1980, pussy. the primary yes. in, uh, what, New Hampshire? Yeah, he was actually quoting a Frank Capra film uh, called State of the Union, and if you uh, if you watch the speech from State of the Union, uh, it it sounds a lot like some stuff Trump would say. Okay, it's on, it's on the YouTube. Um, it was Spencer Tracy as a candidate, and he really teed off. But uh, it's uh, almost a direct reference. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Well, now I know. Ah. Uh... And, and where are we at on the other side? Uh, Bernie uh, Bernie doesn't have much of a shot at this point, they're starting to say? Bernie's got a tough road ahead of him now. South Carolina looks like it's going to be a big win for Hillary. Bernie will take Vermont. He's got a good chance in Massachusetts. But he needs to really do a, a major sweep because Hillary has really pulled a lot of uh, folks behind her with the consolidation of the black vote. Did anyone else see Bernie Sanders? I know uh, Stunt Brain certainly did, because this is his world. Bernie Sanders was trying to get the blacks on his side, <laughs> and he went to some kind of, uh, what was that place, a restaurant or a buffet type of place? And he showed up, and he was going to kind of like eat with some blacks and talk to some blacks. And and no one paid attention to him, and he was wandering around the room looking for someone to talk to. You saw this, right? Stop oh, Brain? yeah. It, it looked very uncomfortable. No, anyone else see this? They didn't, didn't give a it. fuck that Bernie Sanders was in the room. <laughs> oh. And no, he's, he's just standing by, I think, the salad bar. And then some, I think a reporter comes up and so, you know, gets his attention for a little while. And then the rest of the video is him sort of just wandering around. Mm -hmm. And he's walking up to tables and no one is giving a shit, shit. It, that he's there. It looked like a fish out of water scene definitely I, not a good campaign move kind of like got, when you go to those parties and you don't know anybody and then yet now you have a drink in your hand and you're right. like what the fuck, fuck. It, i have right. no one to really talk to here i know this one person that i met one time maybe i could start a conversation with them and you wander and that doesn't work then you wander over there and then you go to the bathroom and you come out of the bathroom get another drink and you just try to like uh make the time go by i thought bernie i thought he was good with the black vote i thought all the I, amongst the hip hop community, they they all Bernie. It's all garbage. Yeah, because then well, the, the candidates promise not hip hop. All, they go fr they go from group to group promising all this shit, hoping that group is going to now vote right. for them. It, it, and and then in the end, most of those promises are empty. We all know that. I would never want to be president or even try to do this. It, it, it looks like this a complete and utter nightmare. And it's all fake bullshit. And he then you do get there. in there, and then over half the country, you know, hates you every single fucking day. Yeah, it's stupid. Every day they f hate your guts. <laughs> Anything else, Stunt Brain? 
That's about it. I think it's going to be a good day for Hillary today and a, another good day for Trump. But Thursday night, another debate for the GOP, and you might see it be a much smaller group. Well, I mean, we're down to five officially, but they're saying there's only three that have a shot, right? Yeah, it's really just Cruz, Carson, or Cruz, Rubio, and uh, Trump. Carson and Kasich should probably slide out pretty soon. Uh, Kasich said he's not. He's well, like, I think after Super Tuesday, after uh, next Wednesday, after next Tuesday, you'll see it really. Uh, did you gel. just say after next Wednesday for two, uh, 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 Super Tuesday? Yeah, because <laughs> the Wednesday morning. Oh, okay, that, that sort of makes sense. And by super, Wednesday, what's Super Tuesday again? That's March just a 1st. super day. All yep. super duper. There's a fifteen uh, primaries. Fifteen wow. primaries. When's the New York primary? Oh, it's way down the road. Oh right? yeah. The yeah. New York primary, it doesn't even matter at that point. They'll already know who the candidates are. Why do they do it? Like, why does primary I don't know stagger why. like that? I don't understand politics at all. Like, when you guys talk about it, I'm fucking so lost. The states try and get the upper hand because then they get all that money. So a lot of folks would like a national primary day where everybody right. has the primary on the yeah. same day. Yeah, that would make but, sense. That'd be good. It, it does kind of make sense, but all the states go, well, we're going to hold ours earlier. And they get all that campaign money spent there. Oh, and it I really see. really is a ton of money. Yeah, that's not oh, fair, because okay. then a lot of these states, by the time we, the, you know, the candidates get to them, it doesn't matter anymore. No. Yeah, you've you got to feel like an and, idiot if you have a primary in May. And to your point, Chris, we usually don't go all in like this with politics. But with the Trump, and yeah. the, uh, this is just a crazy... This is just a yeah. crazy one. Because between the it's... politics and the music, every time I come in here, I feel so fucking dumb. <laughs> I just sit here, and anything I ever say, it's never funny. It's just a stupid <laughs> rambling point. And then Jim just looks at me like, you're done. And then I'm just sitting down at the mic. Now I'm looking at Bonnie McFarlane's face on the cover of her book, and she's smiling at me, and that's about it. Well, Bonnie's coming in a little while. Oh, that'll be nice. She knows politics. All right, good. Thanks, Stunt Brain. You fuck. All right, Stunt Brain. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Mike from uh, TheBlaze.com. He's, he's a good one. And Stunt Brain on Twitter. Do you have the video, Bernie? Wandering around that. Uh, I want to see that. Fir first video I have is Donald Trump saying he wants to punch the guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's yeah, great. Please. This was referenced. I didn't see this one yet. Honestly, I hate to see that. Here's a guy throwing punches, nasty as hell, screaming at everything else when we're talking. And he's walking out, and we're not allowed, you know, the guards are very gentle with him. He's walking out like big high fives, smiling, laughing, like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. <laughs> Somebody... <laughs> and he has a very good shot of oh, being the president of beautiful. the United States of America. That's beautiful. Although I think <laughs> this is still Hillary's to lose in the end. I think it's going to be Hillary no matter what. I hope so. She's a delight. Oh, great. I love her. Ugh. Those pantsuits. Yeah, she's such an ins inspirational speaker. Ugh, you enjoy her. This is our choices? Yeah, that's bad yeah. choices this yeah. year, huh? They so, should be laughing at us in England. I think Joe Biden, right? If he would have entered, that would have been good. Maybe I, he would have won. I don't know what that's about. I don't think it's about his uh, son's death in the end. I really don't. You think there's some dirt on him that I, he didn't want to get covered up? No, he's vice president. They, they would have come out. Yeah, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? When you campaign, don't they really dig deep to try to get when you're vice president. They would, they would have come out. They would have come out. Yeah. I don't know what it I is. Think. I don't think it's just about his uh, losing his son, which is obviously yeah. a brutal fucking thing. Of course. But there seems to be more to that story. Yeah. But who knows? Fuck. Uh, you got the Kasich clip? That's a very good one. John oh, yeah. Kasich got yeah. in a bit of trouble yesterday because he was talking about women leaving the kitchen to support him. <laughs> <laughs> and now, uh, he, now that was a big problem yesterday. Oh, Bless you. Bless you. Oh, God, thank oh, you. I was a little sneezy. Are you okay? I am. Nothing to worry about. You. All right. To 26. And how did I get elected? Nobody was, I didn't have anybody for me. We just got an army of people who, um, and, and many women who left their kitchens to go out and go door to door and to put put yard signs up for me all the way. First off, I want to say your comment earlier about the women came out of the kitchen to support you. I'll come to support you, but I won't be coming out of the kitchen. I got you. This is a huge Jeez. problem. This was a yeah. huge problem yesterday, but what's missed in this clip, because uh, we got a shorter version of it, he's talking about one of his first campaigns way back in the day. Right. Way before a lot of women were, uh, you know, getting their own careers going. Yeah. And he basically was saying, look, they left the, the kitchen to knock on doors to support me in my first campaign. You still can't say that. Why not? It happened. But, but yeah, that he's probably got to spin that a certain way. Like I didn't know what else to say. I mean, should I have said they were squatting over the toilets, taking out their plugs? Go ahead. <laughs> Ladies, I don't know what it is you do. <laughs> he kind of explained it to uh, good old Wolf Blitzer, who... 
who was just a weirdo. The wolf. The wolf is a weirdo. He's a monotone weirdo. But, but you're, CNN loves this guy. I love the wolf. But you're he shows no him. emotion either way. That was my nickname in high school, Wolf. <laughs> wolf. Yeah. Huh? You're agreeing with him though. When he. Uh, he's referencing a time when there were a lot of women that just stayed at home and raised kids. But I don't think you can say that. And were baking in the kitchen. But if you're running for president... So the kids had something nice to eat after school. But if you're running for president, you just can't come out and say that. So how do you say that? It's not. I mean, he couldn't have said... And they came to support me from the whites only water fountain. Like, you can't... Right. Well, you just can't I, say it. Well, yeah, because we were past that whole thing. No. Oh. We weren't past women uh, spending their time in the kitchen in the late 70s. That's right. Yeah. Jimmy knows. Absolutely. Jimmy's with me on this. Yeah. Hey, I get the sniffles. Go make me a hot toddy. <laughs> Ooh, right away. <laughs> late 70s, they still wore dresses every day, these, uh, these housewives. But you're yeah. alienating the people that he, he Getting wants. Getting that martini ready for the man as he walked through the you. door. Yeah. Here's your newspaper and your martini. But I don't... I don't Just, I just don't think you can. It, it, it's it, it's a problem that he can't say it, and that you're in full agreement of it. There's like two areas here that I think are are an issue. We're gonna make believe that the women weren't in the kitchen. No, I just don't think that you can say it the way he said it. I just and and that you're all for it. What's think, wrong with being in the kitchen, by the way? But you're. you're Why is that a bad thing? What are you supposed to eat? But yeah. You're, but you're jumping over the fact that you're totally agreeing with it because women weren't working yet. But I'm just, Not like they are nowadays. But right. then the woman. So there, why is that an insult? Because the woman. Why is it bad to be in the kitchen? Stood up and and had a problem with it, thus backing up my point. Oh, she's, she she she's a new woman, God. and that they're not in the kitchen anymore. I respect that. It but. wasn't what he said originally. Anyway, he actually amended that from an earlier rally where he had gotten in more trouble. So this was a, a more modified statement. Originally, he had said, you toilet-cleaning holes. <laughs> right. <laughs> see, I didn't see the whole story. <laughs> I don't think he was being a dick there. But the woman in the audience did. He's very lovable, this John Casey. I like him. to the subject. He said, gotcha. What happened after that when he was like, gotcha? Like, yeah. I think he probably knew when she said that. He was like, all right, gotcha. But he didn't mean anything by it. <laughs> he was just uh, referring to a time where things were a little different. There were a lot of women that were staying home. Yeah. And they were leaving their houses. But he said leaving the kitchen to go knock on doors for one of his first campaigns. Well, yeah. he... he He's he handled it wrong when he pointed at the at the, the vagina area, and he goes, "Sorry, but those things confuse me." <laughs> uh, how did he explain himself uh, to Wolf Blitzer? Not well. As as Wolf just stared uh, straight ahead. Yeah, yeah. Wolf Wolf sets him up for an apology, and he doesn't quite take it at oh, first. Oh, good. All right. That comment was not artful. But do you think you want to apologize uh, to women out there for uh, saying why would that? You they ask left if he wants to kitchen? apologize, yeah. Wolf. That's not what you're supposed to do. Wolf's trying to insert himself into the story, so then the story is John Kasich apologizes, yeah, of and Wolf's in the story. That's so silly. Of course. But Kasich, yeah. Kasich said, I gotcha, so he understood right away that maybe that was the wrong way to, to put that. Yeah. He was just trying to say that the women have always been with him, even in a time when uh, we didn't maybe respect women as much as we do today because they were busy in the kitchen. Yeah, they were, they were shirking their home duties. Making their chocolate chip cookies. Exactly. Doing woman things. A lot of woman things. Exactly. When you were dropping that little blue thing in the septic tank and you came out to <laughs> campaign for me, I had a girl. <laughs> I, I don't see the problem here because I don't think he meant it. Yeah, he didn't yeah. I, don't, for, I mean, I'm fucking around, obviously, but I don't see the problem. He said it a little weird, and then a woman called him out on it, and he they quickly said, I got it, you know, uh, of course. All right. Gotcha. Next time I won't say it in that way. Uh, let's see Stupid Wolf trying to make it about himself as he just stares blankly at, at the camera. To yeah. women out there for saying that they left their kitchens to campaign for you? Well, you know, look, Wolf, yeah, I mean, anybody be offended, of course. I, sometimes when you operate on the high wire without a net, sometimes, you know, you'll fall off and not say things exactly the way you want to. But let me be clear. In the beginning of my campaign for public office, I did, I did town halls, except they were in people's homes. They were at breakfast tables. They were during the, you know, at He wants to say kitchens, but he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's working his way out to the dining room. <laughs> they were at, uh, they were passed through counters from the, to the dining room, from another room in the house. Uh, they were near stoves. I quickly realized if I wanted to see any women and have them support me, I had to go in the kitchen. Yeah, he's trying to Is avoid that, that word. Were, yeah. Right, he's trying to avoid the word <laughs> kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> homes. They were at breakfast tables. They were during the, you know, at, at evening. Breakfast when we tables. Had Get it? 
Oh, he wants to say kitchen. At evening meals, they were <laughs> where the towel hangs <laughs> by microwaves. <laughs> Afi and I recruited people, and I want to be clear. We had a lot of women that played a major role in, in my political campaign, political life, and they still do. In fact, uh, Wolf, my chief of staff, uh, first one to go in for a new governor was a woman. She's now running my campaign for president. My lieutenant governor is a woman. The first person and only person I appointed to the Ohio Supreme Court is a woman. And, is it uh, women? You know, oh, is no. It, my wife's a woman. Oh, no, what you're panicking. Oh, They're no. just naming women, dude. I, I report, I only, I, 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 I nominated a woman. Oh, oh no. <laughs> now he's Rich Voss. Oh, John. <laughs> Voss gets that one wrong is all it, the time. Is, isn't it Mike woman? Buschetti who gets that wrong? No, it's Voss. How about both of them? Why do they have to be mutually exclusive? No, <laughs> <laughs> good point. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, there are a lot of women that are in the cabinet holding rooms. Ah, my kitchen. Oh. You want to say kitchen there as well? They're in the cabinet. That's right, getting we, down dishes. But we know where the cabinets are. Yes, oh, we yeah. do. They are in the, the blank. Yes, ah. they're in the cabinets, you know, putting stuff away. <laughs> right. Putting a steak over that eye. <laughs> <laughs> the women that are in the cabinet holding roles in my cabinet. So, uh, look, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, people are going to jump on me now. Uh, I take orders from nobody, not from Wall Street, not from K Street, not from special interests. And my campaigns have what's been K good. Yeah, well, I was going to say, what's K Street? Washington. Uh, oh. They call it K Street. They call, why do they call it K Street? How about Main Street? Wall Street to Main Street. Remember right. that guy? What was that regular John guy? Tried, oh, uh, the, uh, oh, yeah, uh, the yeah, plumber? Uh, Joe the plumber? Joe, Joe the plumber. plumber Joe insert the himself everywhere. Hey, regular guy. I'm Joe. Yeah. I'm Joe. You know how many times he probably still says that? <laughs> Remember Joe the plumber? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you go back to the McCain campaign, he was using the guy Joe. Yeah, yeah vaguely. Yeah. I'm him. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. Well, cool. I have a toilet that's yeah, got a lock stuck toilet. in it. That's why I'm wearing this shirt that says Joe the plumber. Joe? Yeah, he's with an arrow pointed up. Yeah, he's at that stage in his fame where he's now wearing a T-shirt with his name on it, <laughs> Joe the Plumber. <laughs> so you ask questions. What does that mean? Oh, well, remember? Yeah. Uh, by the way, during this whole clip, uh, uh, Wolf Blitzer just has a dead eye stare. Yeah. <laughs> Wolf always looks like he's fucking being molested when he's six. <laughs> he just shows no emotion. Nothing. Good. Not from special interests, and my campaigns have been good because they've so, been basically staffed and energized by regular folks. Look, the governor, a lot of women think it was insulting. Why not just say, I made a mistake, I'm sorry? Sure, I'm sorry. Anybody who's offended, of course. I'm not, uh, look, I, it's not, of course. I'm more than happy to say I'm sorry if I offended somebody out there, oh, but it wasn't intended suck. to be offensive. God and if you damn. hear the whole that's, thing, and by the way, right in this moment, thank you, that's John exact, Kasich. That's why. That's a quality that people like about Trump. It's as much as he says shit like stupid. I punched a guy in the face. Yeah, he's not just. He's not bent by this constant fucking barrage yeah. of begging for groveling. Yeah. And when you see the reporters, it's it's a self-serving thing they do because now that's a part of the story. Sure. Kasich apologizes. Oh, it's the CNN logo. It's Wolf yeah. Blitzer. There's no sincerity in it. It's we, silly. We know exactly what happened with that statement. You know, yeah. relax. I don't think the guy meant it. No. Let him off the hook, Wolf. That's That would, that would be beautiful if Wolf said that. Yeah. Like everyone's making a big deal about this, but I, you know, you know, it, I, I understand you didn't mean anything by it. And then you you quickly corrected yourself when that lady said, "Well, I'm certainly not leaving the kitchen." You said, "I got it." Yeah, he could at that said, moment in time. I got it too, sir. He could have just said, "Why'd you say that?" Ah, you know, it was one of those things. Of it was course. back then. The times were a little different. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have said it like that. Okay, moving forward, mm -hmm. that should have been the end of it. Yeah. Yes. The clip. It's it's two minutes of him well, they just got a talking circles. Fill airtime. I mean, they got they need things to talk about. So this is it. All right, push play. We're Stand just sucks. The context of it, but look, all I'm saying to you, Wolf, is that without the power of the women who helped Wolf, me see, out. Wolf, that's right. In Escape from Alcatraz, that's who I liked. Remember Wolf? You hurt Wolf. Wolf's gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I remember Wolf when he was trying to get fucking Clint Eastwood to fuck him in the shower. <laughs> Looking for a new punk. <laughs> I love the language they used when you talk about the fight with Wolf. He goes, Wolf wanted to get friendly. I didn't. That's such a man's thing to say. Right. I didn't. Wolf wanted to get friendly. That's friendly. how he accused an almost prison rape. <laughs> uh, the power of the women who helped me out early in my career to give me a chance to hold public office, I wouldn't have made it, and I'm very grateful to all the work that they I put in like for me. seems like a nice man. Why don't we just leave the guy alone? He uh, seems like a nice fella. It's a, it really is a non-story. He was just basically trying to say that the women have always supported him. Stupid. So...
Ah, oh, Wolf. Not women. Wolf just staring at the camera the entire fucking time. Yeah. You hurt Wolf. Wolf's going to hurt you. Wolf. All right. So hey, there you go. There's headline story. Where? Case apologizes for saying women left their kitchens to back him. CNN. But there you go. That's what that's about. The apology is now the story. And they don't, but they don't even say what year that was. That's kind of important, don't you think? Oh, yeah. It, it makes a little bit of a difference. You didn't say it as far as the women of today goes. Do you notice how most stories, there's no headline, so-and-so refuses to apologize? Because they don't get what they want. That's not that interesting. Mm -hmm. The apology is where the story is. Right. You, I you said the same it, thing though. three times. You yeah. nailed it. The, now they're part of the story. No, people heard me the first time. Why do they have to reiterate? <laughs> That's all this right. is what this is for. I'm pointing to a microphone. It might be the people that just got in their cars and just turned on their engine. That's true. They're probably like, hope Jim's making a smart point. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's push to start now. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, the push to start push. is fucking weird. I know. Maybe I should do a, a fucking roll yeah. down the window thing like a 1980 <laughs> or a check your yeah. Why does my mic keep falling? That's a euphemism, by the way. <laughs> I don't understand why you, you, you have this key, but you don't do anything with it. It just Stupid. stays in your pocket? Yeah, it's silly. It's fucked up. It's silly. <laughs> the whole thing's fucked up. Push. Uh, Trump bought the rights to Jeb Bush's website. Yeah, we did that last week. Yeah. Jeb uh, let to, didn't pay for his own website, and Trump jumped on that. So if you go to... It doesn't matter anymore because Jeb Bush is out of the race. But K uh -huh. Street is where all the lobbyists are. No, uh, it's a bit of Main Street from Wall Street to Main so Street. What's a lobbyist? I don't know. Someone that hangs out there. You know those guys you so, check in with when you come yeah, in? The doorman? <laughs> yeah. I think it's someone looking <laughs> for a favor. <laughs> for a favor? I think I think that has, right? Uh, so yes. Looking for favors? Yeah. Lobby. I don't know. I'll vote for you if you do a little something for me. They're lobbying. They're originally called couriers, trying to curry favor. But yeah. that's what Bernie Sanders' appeal is. He says he doesn't have, and nobody's in his pocket. He doesn't have well, Trump, anybody's pocket. Trump has the same thing on the other side. Yep. They say, I don't have to deal with any of these fucking shitheads, is basically what Trump wants to say. I see. But where Hillary is all, she's like an absolute... She's trying to make believe she doesn't go down that road, but, but she goes down that road, time. Chris. So she's a billboard. She's a walking billboard for these pieces uh, of Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, she's pretty established. Okay. She's an established candidate. Established candidate. That's what that means. When you're an established candidate, that's what that means? You play the game. You play the game. You're wheeling and dealing. Yeah. These special interest groups and lobbyists. Is Rubio even eligible to be president? Who's to say Donald Trump's just asking questions? Well, Donald. Why isn't Rubio eligible? Well, let me tell you about this one, Krista Stefano. Joe Cruz was the Canadian. Ru well, yes, but Rubio was born to two um, uh, parents, two Cubans uh -huh. that weren't American yet. Oh. And I think a couple months ago, Stunt Brain hopefully is uh, nodding his head somewhere going, yes, yes, you got this right. Stunt Brain. Uh, Trump said a couple months ago that it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't matter. He's eligible to be president. But now he's changing his fucking tune just to mm. try to get that shit in your head. The eligibility. Supposedly trick. it's totally fine if if you're born on American soil. That's all that matters. Right. At the time, uh, Rubio's parents were not uh, citizens of America. That means nothing to me. It probably should. But it's one of those things that uh, who gives a fuck? It it well, just good old important. George Stephanopoulos. Uh, good dude. Was trying to make uh, something out of this as, uh, as well. So that guy's got a fucking head of hair on him. Holy shit! Yeah. Mm. Stephanopoulos has literally the most perfect do I've ever seen on a person. But I want to muss it up, <laughs> good naturedly. <laughs> good naturedly, tussle it around. Yeah, just share a laugh with him while he fixes it. Come on, <coughs> get serious. Oh, this fucking stunt brain just DM'd me on Twitter. I'm oh. just gonna explain the. Well, he didn't DP you. <laughs> It's going to explain the K Street. Didn't we explain the K Street on our own? Why do we need his shit? K Street is in D.C., and all the big lobbyists are on K Street. Is so K for Kesha? Ooh. <laughs> Clever segue. Clever girl. What's up with the Kesha? That, that that whole thing is weird. That's a weird story, man. You know about the Kesha? I do. I'm coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to die? Then do it. I do know. <laughs> oh, my God. You. Yeah. Uh, someone rape. <coughs> did someone rape Kesha? Is that what they're trying uh, to say? The producer, the, the doctor, I guess. He was a big producer. Apparently, he's very good. And, and she's saying that. You all right? I'm what coughing. Is I know, but are you okay? Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, he he, yeah. he was saying that uh, she's saying that the guy and I don't know obviously the story. heart attack Jesus <coughs> go ahead Jimmy sorry that's okay the um th that she's saying I guess he raped her and drugged her when she was eighteen right and made her feel really bad about herself and I guess other people have come out and said he made them feel shitty I, I don't know. 
But there's has there, the criminal charges. Were there any criminal charges? This is a really weird it's a, case. It is a strange case because then other people are saying that Kesha's trying to find a way out of her uh, out of her contract, out but of Jesus, her record would, deal. You hope that's not true. Like, would she actually falsely accuse a guy of rape to get out of her record deal? I, I look. I don't know shit, but I feel like uh, Kesha probably is leaning toward telling the truth on this one. But I don't know. I, I, I just have no idea. Music it's a long way to go to get out of a record contract. Right. Yeah, that's or, what I'm or did they fuck and then she was, uh, he's in a Twitter rant saying, I didn't rape Kesha. If it's not true, and, and this whole thing didn't happen, I feel bad for the guy, but they're asking for money like to back Kesha or to save Kesha. I don't like the fact that Taylor Swift is supporting this and not the Chip Chipperson campaign. Ooh. That's just my thing. Yeah, that's not cool, That's uh, Taylor. very unfair. But she donated a quarter of a million dollars. But uh, Dr. Luke accused Timber Singer Kesha of lying. He's saying she's lying, and uh, and she wants the upper hand in contract negotiations. And he always considered her a little his sister. He's saying, I didn't rape Kesha, and I've never had sex with her. We were friends for many years, and she was like my little sister. It's sad she would turn a contract negotiation into something so horrendous and untrue. Wow, this is weird. This is a he said, I would have uh, a hard she time said. Believing that a woman would go through all of this to... to publicly say somebody raped me yeah i, I don't but well, she has six records she has to do with this yeah. thing so maybe well, she, she signed six a deal. records that she needs to do with the with with the company <laughs> well this is what kind yeah, of she doesn't have to ever deal with this guy again right that, well that's basically what what the the judge and what sony is saying is that you don't have to do your records with you don't have to ever Dr. see this Luke. guy again you could do them with somebody else right but what her people are saying is well we feel like you won't push us they won't get promoted, right? You won't. We won't get promoted because Doctor Luke is like their guy. He he is. He's one of the top. Producers. How about Doctor Han Solo or Doctor Darth Vader? Trav, go ahead. I injected a little humor with the name. Did you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, the judge said that you, she can't break the contract because I, I I don't know what the right thing is. Were there any charges against this guy ever or no? No, and Doesn't I think that's going to be determined yeah. very soon. It's yeah. a really weird thing because you never want victims being afraid to come out. Like you never want, like, of course. They, and then they're like, "Well, that's why women don't speak up." Of course. So that's that's a good point. You don't want women ever afraid to speak up. But then again, you don't want guys falsely accused of rape and having it gain momentum just right. because you want to be nice. Like I don't know what the fucking right answer is. He's saying he didn't do this shit. This is a weird one. But the New York Supreme Court on Friday found Kesha is already free to record, like we said, and release music without working with Dr. To Luke as a producer, if she doesn't want to, and and and, and uh, Taylor Swift gave her a quarter of a million after Demi Lovato, I guess, called out uh, Taylor Swift for not publicly helping Kesha. Right. But the lawyers for Doctor Luke reiterating that he is not the one preventing her from releasing yeah uh, says, new tunes. Says any claim that she isn't free is a myth. Uh, you know that guy still works with the company, but uh, she doesn't have to work with him. And I don't know. If if the guy is a rapist, and even if he's a good producer, would Sony keep a, 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 a knowingly keep a? Maybe they would. I mean, I don't know how the record depends on how many hits. I started this guy watching the pens has. Yeah, it's I started watching vinyl. Money. They're a little scummy. The record people. I like vinyl. I, I I'm not through. It was very late when I started last night. I forgot it was two hours. What I've seen. I saw Dice Clay. I saw Dice Clay. How great was his performance? He's a fucking great actor, man. We've all known that. <laughs> yeah. But Andrew is so fucking good as an actor. Isn't he great? That bastard is fucking holy. He's awesome in this. We kind of know that guy, though, right? That he's playing? He's so good. I don't know the drugged out. No, no, no. We but, know the lesser yeah. version of that character, though, where he just wants to hang and holy talk shit. and hold you. And yes. Don't show all this because. Uh, that, that's so fucking good, man. I, I definitely like Dice a lot in vinyl. Is the show good, vinyl? Of what I've seen, it's I, very good, yeah. I liked it. I think they made a mistake by making the premiere two hours. Okay. It felt a little long. A little long, but I, I'm definitely in. I'm definitely uh, liking it. Dice they were has shitting on it shops. on ESPN. Were they? Yeah, yeah the, the guy, those guys, Rusillo and Canel, yeah, they were okay. fucking shitting on the show. Dice has what mutton chops and long hair. He has crazy, yeah. like almost like the Asian bad guy in the movie hair, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. bald in the front and the hair in the back. He looks awesome with the hair like that. Yeah. And he's fucking... He's so good. He switches gears. He's moving fast and then slow and then sad yeah. and then he's aggressive and he's crazy. And yeah. God damn, is he good, man. I, I never saw Dice play on a I, Coke bender. I'm so happy for him, though. I, I, I love I'm it. I watch it. God, is what, he good. What were they saying? What, what was their problem with vinyl? They were saying that, you know, it's just... It was Martin Scorsese, right? Yeah, and Mick Jagger's involved. They were saying yeah. like he was just doing all his... 
like old tricks and just like what? Just, I don't know. Kind of great. Too, it was though. shitting up. Bob, yeah, Ka- I Ka- thought Ka- it. I, I thought it was shot beautifully. Yeah, and it's yeah. Uh, it's uh, New York City in the '70s, so it's all dirty and That's gritty, dope. and it, I like it so far. It's not well received. It's not really. No. Yeah, <coughs> I, I haven't. Have you checked it out, Travis? No, I haven't. I have it on my DVR, but all the reviews that I read really yeah. just make me want to. You know, skip it and watch something. Man, else. I liked it. I really did. I, I I wonder if the premiere being two hours hurt it. It just, it felt a little long. I said that already. <laughs> I just realized I said that already. No, I know, but it was funny. We but catch ourselves thin- repeating shit. But I did it earlier. I was like, I said yeah. that three times. Why? But it's more what I'm thinking in my head. So I'm like, <clears throat> you know, I could have kept that to myself. What are those in-flight apartments, luxury rooms on flights? Oh, oh you, United, the Arab Emirates, United Arab Emirates. Goddamn, they really know how to fucking make Woo! a plane. In-flight Look apartments. Look at that toilet. But that's probably four. You know, I'm gonna guess it's twenty thousand for a flight. How big is this fucking plane? Look at the size of this. Look Huge. at the size. Wow. Look at those leather. I mean, that's just coach. No I'm kidding. Look at how comfortable that is. Dude, mm. I would I would fly to Rochester in that thing in Hell a yeah. second. Dude, it's too big. I would fly to Roch in a second. Wow. If I knew this was an option. There fucking are flights. How wow. many of these are there? That um, must be the whole plane. That's, that's at thirty thousand feet includes bathroom, shower, and living room. I've seen that's probably uh yeah that's probably uh there's a lot of them too. Yeah, that's a giant first class. Probably the seven. Whoa! Doesn't they have a lounge? Yeah, it's really nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, nah. Whatever. Thank you, Mister. Damn. Oh, thank you. Uh, where Sorry. Were, where were we? Sorry, Cloth. Jesus, thank you for this. I didn't even order. Did you guys see? I didn't listen the to. The, I didn't listen to the show yesterday. But did you guys see? Um, you might have played it already. Did you guys see Chris Jenner get booed while she was giving that speech? You know, I, I tweeted yesterday because someone uh, uh, pointed out to me. But me and Tom Papa were having a good laugh about that off mic. Oh, off, okay. We, we didn't bring it to the. Uh, but, but then I played the clip, and I the boos aren't that loud. Really? I thought they were pretty loud. You think? Maybe I was hearing boos in my own head. Uh, unhappy LA crowd boos Chris Jenner at iHeart Radio Party. Where were we before we went off roading? We were talking about politics, and then we'd start talking about Kesha. Yeah, the Kesha I went thing. into Dice, but I, that, that's a really weird... Maybe there's something I don't know about this Kesha thing. I mean, she, I've been seeing the hashtag, and, you know... Uh, I, I'm trying I don't to figure know what the right answer out. is, yeah. Like, it's you know like, it's definitely a he said, she said. Yeah. But why is it all... Like, like, it's so weird now. Like, why do we have to go the other direction? Like, if, if a woman accuses a guy... Um, you know, you, she has to be taken seriously, and you have to pursue it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that he's guilty. No, I know. He might be, and in which case, then Sony are scumbags for keeping him. <clears throat> you know what I always think in those situations? The, between the two people, one of them knows, holy fuck, th- uh, I'll just say this person is right. lying through their teeth. Yeah. And that must drive the person nuts. Like, you know, the whole world, like, uh, you know, the the radio show is discussing, well, I don't know what's right here, but there's one person in that situation that knows exactly what the deal is, and they got to be really frustrated and pissed off how this is playing out. Yeah. I mean, and the accusation enough is just, it fucking ruins you, man. Sure. The accusations suck. Sure. Yeah. So someone, someone in that situ- situation is a horrible person. Horrible piece of shit. Horrible person. Yeah. One of them, that's right, one of them is a horrible Horrible piece horrible of shit. Piece of shit That's a great person. Point. One of them is a terrible. Has to be. One of them yeah. is scum. And I don't know who that person is because I'm not close enough to that situation. It, you know, what we're reading, it's very interesting. Hmm. Uh, we were going to play something before Jimmy brought up vinyl and all that. Not that it matters, but it, uh, ah, whatever. Uh, do, do you like vinyl, though? I like the premiere. Um, I, I haven't said yet. I'm going to watch the last... 45 minutes of it. It just got a little very late, but I wanted to see more dice. I couldn't stop watching the fucking oh, Andrew, man. Watch it. Let's just put it this way. You're going to want to see more dice. Yeah, I love them. That's your tease. If you don't like the show and you're going to move on from it, at least finish the first fucking episode. Watch That's it for all Andrew. It's say. so good. Yes. And Cannavale's great. How did they not like Bobby Cannavale in this? He's fucking tremendous. And I think they spent a little too long just setting up the whole show. You know, you know the first episode always has to set up everybody sure, and the characters yeah. and stuff. So. Oh, exactly, yes. I don't know. I liked it. I, I'm definitely going to watch some more episodes. But anyway, yeah. uh, the Chris Jenner thing, I guess, being booed. I like when a Kardashian gets booed. Yeah, it's crazy. You like that or no? I, You know, here's how I feel about them is, yeah, I, you know, I know they really say they don't have talent or whatever, but I feel like at this point, to be able to sustain their fame and keep making money, they do have some kind of talent. I don't know what it is. Well, she's pretty smart. But Chris, there's something... Chris Jenner's behind the whole fucking thing. Yeah, I believe that they all... Even like when those Jersey Shore kids got famous, I was like, well, they did something right. I mean, they're fucking... 
They're in the top one percent of fame. The Kardashians did nothing to bring on anger about themselves. Robert Kardashian, great friend. You know, his fucking friend decapitates someone almost, and he's <laughs> yeah. like, ah, you know what? He's a good egg. I'll hang with him. Yeah, he's a good egg. <laughs> Kim Kardashian does nothing but show her big juicy ass off on Twitter mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, what's the, they do nothing wrong? They just like all they do is fuck. Yeah, right. these girls all fuck and they're all hot. They're yeah, all, they're all very. That's hot. their talent. They're very fucking sexy. awesome. They do nothing. Kanye is the only twat it, in the whole family, including that Caitlyn, right, guys? Uh huh. No, I wouldn't fuck Caitlyn, but I'm an ageist. That's the only reason. If Caitlyn was yeah. 30 years younger, I might stick it in the shitter, but. Not at that age. My, my wife knows how much it bothers me now. So when the Kardashians are on in the house and Bruce pops up, she like kind of nudges me and points at the screen <laughs> just to get my reaction. There was a scene where uh, he's having a heart to heart with one of his younger daughters at a pool. But I saw that. <clears throat> but he walks in like high heels yeah. to his seat next to the pool, and I, I can't fucking wrap my head around it. If, if, if it was a I show, just can't wrap my head around it. If it was a reality I, show that followed a family whose father uh, be, uh, became transgendered, um, that would be fine. The fact that it's Bruce Jenner and it's I, the whole Kardashian clan, it is crazy. I think it's okay to say I can't wrap my head around it. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm Try wrapping your mouth around it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm, a, I'm accepting, but I don't... It just That's every tough. time he pops up, I start laughing because it's so ridiculous. It's, and then, and then Sherrod's comment about how he has a Joe Klecko knee just uh, is always playing in my head. <laughs> Joe Klecko <laughs> He's knee. got a giant Joe Klecko knee <laughs> from his time being an athlete. It's but hard that, when you know somebody as somebody. You know, I mean, when you know right. the guy is Bruce, it's it's hard to make the switch. That's but then see, you look the, at Bailey J, and I go, okay, right, I get it. See, I look at Bruce Jenner like I look at Bailey J because Bruce Jenner's as an athlete really meant nothing to me. I had no clue that he. I, the only time I'd ever even heard of Bruce Jenner. You couldn't look at Bruce the way you look was, at Kaylin, the way you look at Bailey, Bailey J. Right. You ever tug your dick to Kaylin Jenner? I didn't think so. No. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at the joke like Oni. <laughs> <laughs> Sherrod rules for pointing that out. I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to like do with that when yeah. it pops up on the TV. I just start laughing because it's... Yeah. Because he's he, she is still uh, awkward in in uh, in high heels and right. doesn't have that doesn't that uh, doesn't have that down yet and uh, I don't know I find and, and talks, I find humor in it and talks in the normal voice talks like Bruce Jenner right so it's like you know Kylie come here let's talk right and then the daughters will also some they'll call they call her him. Kylie or I'm sorry call her Caitlyn or they'll sometimes call her dad no That's they call weird. her uh, they call her dad most of the time I guess his daughters to call him dad and then the older ones. Call him Caitlyn. I guess that's what it is on the Kardashian show. How big of an athlete was he when he was at the top? When he was Bruce Jenner, like can oh, someone put he, it in the he was the to number one so athlete, understand? number one athlete, uh, like Michael Phelps, like that bigger Olympian. Than Michael Phelps. He was huge. He was bigger than Michael Phelps. And it was also a time where we didn't have all these distractions. So when you were famous, you were really famous. Right. And he won gold medal. How many gold medals? One. Was, was there only one gold medal? The decathlon, sure. Okay, he won one decathlon, and then he was everywhere His for a long time. His image was very, very good. He was a positive, handsome guy. Women right. loved him. Uh, boyish, charming. He was on the cover of the Wheaties box for fucking years. So would it be like someone, for me, like if like Derek Jeter just... One day was like yeah, I'm a like that woman. level of, that level. of Easily. like being an iconic wow. guy. Yeah, he, he was Jordan. That, um, Jordan so for a little jo while. For a little while, Jordan uh, was able to carry that longer than Bruce Jenner. Uh, but yeah, Bruce Jer Jenner's fame from winning that right. uh, gold medal at the Olympics was just massive. So how many other massive. how many other names do you know from the '76 Olympics? I could I don't know anybody do, from any Olympics. I mean, you know, what I'm saying like yeah. he's still that famous. Mark right. Spitz was '72, right? What about um, maybe Greg he made it to seventy six? Gainus was, was that after? Uh, yeah, that's the 80s. eighty. Oh. I think 1980, 84. And none of them are as famous as Bruce. Seventy six right. Olympics. That's a really good question. Well, Nadia Comaneci. I mean, but not, not right. meaning none. Was of it Nadia? I think so. Yeah. But I mean, none of them are like are, are, are that right. famous where you just know the name. Give me the list of athletes from uh, the seventy six Olympics. This will be fun for the older uh, the older people listening to us. The older. Give me gen. give me like five from uh, the seventy six Olympics. Was that the Hitler Olympics? What? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hitler micro penis. <laughs> I heard about that micro penis. You saw a Hitler micro penis, yeah. right? Boy, yeah. that explains a lot. Uh, yeah, you got Nadia Comaneci. Hated those Jews and their big dicks. Ah, Packers. Ah, Packers. Sugar oh, Ray Leonard. Bunch of Jews or something. Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, uh, Jimmy. Oh, that's yeah, a big one. That go. was a lot of boxers we we know and love. You had Sugar Ray, Leon Spinks, Michael Spinks. Howard Davis Jr., remember that dude? I don't know. I vaguely remember him. I know Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, Fuck yeah. 
So basically, it was <laughs> Sugar Ray Leonard. My peck of small. The biggies were Sugar Ray Leonard, Nadia Comaneci, and Bruce Jenner. And then you could squeeze in the spin. Nadia Comaneci. And that was it for the 76 Olympics. He was huge, Chris, for, to answer your question. Yeah. He was the biggest athlete in the world for at least uh, a year after that. Jesus. And then he was on everything. So it's hard. Every TV show. Yeah, Love Boat. Uh, the, uh, it's Battle a lot harder for you to accept this than me. I, it's a lot harder. No, I'm, I, I, I'm accepting. Whatever no. makes a person happy, as long as they're not fucking hurting me, I don't give a fuck. No, I mean you accept it, but it's you have to go through a lot more but, things in your brain to to understand all that. I don't. I just I, when I saw it's the really first time, strange. Like when he gets together with his uh, yeah his his pals from the Olympics, that's got to be just a weird room. It's weird. But whatever, if it makes him happy, I don't give a fuck. I really don't. I don't give a fuck. But I, yeah. I but I, I do kind of laugh when I see him walking around in high heels because he can't really do that right yet. Bruce. Where's Joe Klecko, D? Joe Klecko. Uh the the um, the Chris Jenner clip. Yes, he was in Chips. Yes. He What's was. that? Oh yeah. Oh, I, <laughs> did I say Chips? <laughs> What's that? Oh boy. <laughs> I said chips, didn't yes, I? He did. <laughs> you, woke, you woke up a sleeping tiger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people are making a big deal about Chris Jenner being booed at the iHeartRadio party. Push play of this. To introduce Culture Club, she's the momager of the century, star of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. A momager? momager, that's the yeah. new term of the What's century. What's a momager? Of the century, that like a manage, mom manager. So that oh. <laughs> Jimmy just pushed the mic away. You That's don't like the that? worst word combination Mom I've ever heard. Well, well that was the one. that got the the crowd going. Yeah, yeah, they hated that. They Mom-a-jer. didn't like that. They didn't like that. Oh. oh, and Culture Club, by the way, Karma Chameleon, right? Yes. See that one I knew, it? Boy George. I, I I don't know a lot of songs, but that one I knew. Yeah, they had a few catchy songs. Yep. Uh, club. Momager. She's the momager of the century, uh, star of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Chris Jenner. Listen, while she talks, Good evening. Though. From the moment I heard about Boy George back in the 80s, I was completely obsessed. No way. Not only with his music, Not even acknowledging but inspired it. by his amazing nope. fashion. Ah, it keeps going. It keeps that going. That stupid hat. hat. The eyebrows, Why are you dressed the like the Invisible Man? And the blush. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting him last hat. summer in France was exciting and the start of an oh, awesome friendship. Don't yeah. listen and to them. And he even celebrated my 60th birthday with me. Uh-huh. I think I'm enjoying it. Pause. Yeah. Pause. Ne- this is awesome. I told you. Yeah. I heard this on my phone. I, no. I, I am completely wrong. Wow, yeah. that's some loud booing. Dude, and she on my phone, it didn't sound as impressive. She doesn't acknowledge it at all. And then, no. and then at the end, she goes, woo! Like, no, but like what you miss, you're missing is a yeah. guy. I don't know who the guy is. Okay. He's trying to get in there like, hey, hey. Yeah, he, He's I getting mad. Like he's, tr- he's going to try to. Oh, you think that was Boy that's George? That's what I thought when I heard it. I thought it's Boy George oh. being like, stop, stop it. Oh, he was going to say, you know, shut up and listen yeah, or something. Shut up. But that never saying. works. That never works when you try to tell her how to yeah. shut up. <laughs> oh my God, they hate her. Worse. They're allowed to hate her. I mean, L- uh, back up a little bit because you hear, hey, I didn't know that might be. that. They're saying that was Boy George possibly? Okay. Some friendship. And he even celebrated my 60th birthday with me. The hey. lasting influence of the next band can be heard among hey, all people. the biggest names in music today, <laughs> from Sam Smith to Adele. So bad. They're genre bending and gender bending, giving millions of people the confidence to be themselves. They simply define the decade. Give it up for iHeartRadio and the Culture Club. Oh, you don't end with woo after you that beating. Woo. That was brutal. That's why, a beating. But why was she there to introduce them? Why would they think she's Christian? that famous? They're just, I don't know. They're just trying to get some heat for their show. I yes. don't like her Getting fucking big celebrities. dumb hat. That's like a burn victim outfit. Just a hat. You can't <laughs> see any of her hair and jacket. And People uh, bullying. No real form in her body. She probably has a nice big pussy, though. Yeah. I always thought that. But yeah, she does. Mm-hmm. Oh, she, uh, oh, yeah, she is dressed like the Joker. <laughs> 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 oh, well. This, that was kind of enjoyable. Yeah. Especially the, hey! Hey! Yeah. What do you say? You people? Hey, hey people! Hey, hey people! That never works. He's mad because they were fucking bullying over words about him. Yeah. They yeah, were, you think? Yeah! They were, they, she's, like, giving them this great intro, and they're all bullying. They're concentrating on how much they hate her instead of what she's saying about him. Yeah. All right. What did he sing when he came out? He probably started with a little uh, 
I would assume he would go comic chameleon. Comic right? chameleon. Short set. You got to go right to the big right ones. Right there. You got to go big. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, why don't we take a break? Bray I Heart Radio. Hats off to those fucking people. What a brilliant marketing strategy. Because it was nothing at one point. This was all satellite radio's thing. Mm -hmm. And then they, they, the satellite radio should be doing those. Even yeah. though terrestrial radio, there's more people. But yeah. They do their Apollo show. Maybe they got to expand it a little bit more. Yeah, do an arena show with a bunch that's, of artists. That's the show uh, Rick Springfield was, was talking about. Oh. Yeah. When he was in. And he was, was scared he on to that? mention yeah, yeah. it. And we're yeah. like, we don't give a fuck. Yeah, we don't care. Mention whatever you want, Ricky boy. Ricky. Uh, I think that's it for now. Chris Stefano in studio. Yep. You got Thursday through Saturday comics at Mohegan Sun. Mm hmm. And then next weekend, Bananas in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey. Yep. It's uh, ChrisDComedy.com for all his dates, right? Yes, that's it. And we got Bonnie McFarlane and Lita Ford coming in today. Nice. Yep. And Jimmy's got some things. I have um, my gay mouthful of shame tour, which is going remarkably well, nice. surprisingly. Um, Thursday the 3rd, Red Bank, Count Basie, uh, Long Island sold out. Friday, uh, Saturday the 5th, Montclair. And we are showing the uh, Dos Anjos McGregor fight after that. So if you guys want to hang out and watch the UFC fight, I'm definitely doing that. And then the week after, the 10th, 11th, and 12th, Indianapolis, my first time ever. Cleveland, which is almost sold out. And Grand Rapids, Michigan, the uh, Fountain Street Church. I think that's a festival. Ooh. Nice. All right. I think we'll be back with Bonnie McFarland. Stay there. Hi, guys. That's yeah. like a real guest. Bonnie. Those leather hey, pants? Know. Yes, yeah, dope. I like them. I like them. Nice. Yeah, we like you. And in I the said, you all rock and roll for your promotion tour. I like that. <laughs> it's nice. Good shirt. Well, you know, I'm staying in a hotel, and uh, I didn't want to carry a lot of stuff, so I wore these pants last night. I'm going to wear them to the event tonight. What's the event and tonight? I'm doing a thing at the Strand. Uh, of the it's the book launch at the Strand Bookstore here in What's New York Strand? City. Oh, okay. You're really having a problem with that microphone today. I, I, I literally want to break it in half. <laughs> and so is everyone with ears. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're, you're going to be, uh, the book launch is at the Strand tonight. I think Jim Gaffigan's helping you out, right? Jim Gaffigan's going to like interview me. That's pretty cool. The new KFC meeting. guy. He is, is he? New, yeah, yeah, he's the new KFC oh, guy. Sanders. God, it's perfect. He's perfect. The, why he's, didn't Why didn't they think of that before? He's the that's third perfect. Colonel Sanders. Yeah. Was Rich mad you didn't ask him to interview? No, well, he was supposed to do it on Wednesday at in Jersey City, and then because uh, I'm doing another one, Word yeah. in Jersey City, and and then of course he's writing on the Oscars, so he can't do it, and it is impossible. First of all, it's it's embarrassing to ask people to do stuff for you. Yeah, and uh, like it was. So embarrassing as Jim, and it, you know, but he said yes. But to ask somebody to come out to Jersey for free, could you read my book and then? Well, that's what that's what our friends are for. Yeah, I know, but it was, you know. I think so that, I asked him. I don't. I like, think you feel like no, you're still that little girl on the farm. <laughs> oh God! That's right. <laughs> nice segue. Yeah. Where is that little girl today, Bob? I think that little girl is still. <laughs> I still, I think you're still As, that little girl at the farm. Chris, Has Rich read your book yet or no? Yeah, uh, he's 100 pages in. He's oh, good. 120. Wow. Oh, now he's up he's to 120. 120. Awesome. Yeah. Does he like it? He sure was he at 100 for a long time, just yeah. sat there. I, I uh, listened to the last uh, My Wife Hates Me on this channel last week. We were driving. Oh, God. And, uh... And Sorry. Vinny Brand was just babbling and yapping. He's so loud. I kept thinking, is are they turning it down in there? I don't know how to. I enjoyed it though, so I, I know I confuse people by saying that because then I have to deal with Vinny Brand uh, texting me all day. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. But he yaps. He's a yapper. He's a pardon. Yapper. Pardon. Right, pardon what? Pardon. I, I don't curse on the radio. <laughs> and then he did. Because <laughs> <laughs> he it's not my thing. He says it's not his thing to curse. And this goat. He's a weird man. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, he's funny. He's a funny man. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't hear half the shit. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, well, funny. he does crowd work, which is funny. If you, you know, he's he's deaf. He's fully deaf in one ear. Pardon. Yeah, so Pardon. he does crowd Pardon. work, and then he goes, so what do you do for a living? What? 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 It's like, <laughs> yeah. like, if it was a character, it would be hilarious, but he's really doing it. Yeah, you can't really do crowd work if you're, <laughs> you can't hear in one ear. No, <laughs> that's not good. He needs to, you know, people yeah. to, could you face the light? I need to read your lips. Yeah. <laughs> but through that, uh, I was getting to the fact that I heard that Voss read 100 pages. I was like, okay, finally. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's, that's He's a, only had the book for a year. 
Supportive. Right. He's supportive. He could have read this thing a year ago and support his wife. He could have at any point asked me while I was writing it, what, yeah. what, 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 what are you writing? He, yeah. he said every day, he'd say, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> still still writing the book. <laughs> and um, during, I was probably maybe on chapter three when he um, really started to, to um, push hard for me to write his book. Oh, really? He was talking about his own book while you were doing yours? He went and had a meeting and everything. Oh, to, God, like, Rich. <laughs> God. I should, you know, he immediately starts to think, like, he sees that I'm writing about m my life, and he starts instead to think, like, instead of thinking, like, I wonder what she's writing about or what, what, what interesting stories from her life she's talking about. He says, oh, what about my life? Oh, my life would be a really good book. Then why does he just the, the way to do it is you start talking it into your phone, into your uh, program. You, you can do your own thing. You don't have to sit there and write it like yeah. while you're writing yours. Well, that should be a motivating factor for him to write one. Well, that's just yeah. not the time to no, start. No, not at all. That. You he's, have to be supportive. Exactly. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> it, please tell me he's not in this book at all. He's he he. he he comes at the very end. They told okay, me uh, end. Th that I could have the book deal if I left him out. <laughs> 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 no, I'm gonna I'm so I'm gonna write another one. That's about. okay. So um, this is actually a really good story because um, Anthony Bourdain is behind yeah. this. Yes, I think noticed. And what what you did a roast for him or something like that, and he was like, "Wow, he really was impressed by you," and said, "And then how did the book come about?" So. Um, just a little while. I hate that I'm interviewing you. Can't uh, we just fucking fool around and talk and then maybe get some of this shit hold out? Hold on, let's just get to the brass oh, taxes. God, I hate Where this. do you get your ideas? <laughs> this is so well, weird. Well, when you... I'm jogging on the treadmill. <laughs> um, but I mean, the Bourdain angles is pretty good. Yeah, he, you know, I, he was. He wrote there the was forward. this roast, and I did the roast, and I was, you know, really mean because that's how roasts are. You were on the roast. I Jim was, was yes. on the roast, and uh, Artie Lang was on the roast. Who else? It was like a Eric ton Repair. of. Yeah. You know who was who nice was Rachel Ray. Yeah, she, she got a beating, and oh, she was I awesome. I trashed her, yeah. and then I, I was scared after, and she was like really nice. She was really that. lovely. Yeah. 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 Was she funny? Did she do a set? Yeah, I think she was okay. She I don't remember. Right? I think People she was enjoyable. People were not that great. Uh, the other. The the cook the chefs the guy chef Fieri got Repair killed. was good because he has a very thick French accent, so it just was funny. It sounded funny. Yeah, okay. guy got murdered. Guy Fieri. Oh God. Um, I believe that would happen. And Who's the guy with the ponytail? And that's Mario Batali. Yes, he got trashed too. Yeah, he got trashed. Was wow. Emma Lagasse there? No. Mm -hmm. No, but Gilbert destroyed Mario uh, Batali. Is that how you say his name? Batali? I think so. I don't know. He just kept doing, Mario Batali is so fat! <laughs> and he did nothing but how fat Mario Batali was. <laughs> Very funny. Wow, there were a lot of big chefs there. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. A lot of cooking and stuff. And Bourdain was there. He liked your set, and then you guys just kind of started a little... Uh then he, um, um, his, uh, his agent asked me to go for lunch and said, uh, it is okay if, uh, Bourdain comes. I was like, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, I was nervous, uh, but not as nervous as the other people, uh, working in that restaurant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, they, yeah. When they see him come in there, you can see it. Right. They're like, oh, fuck. They're having all sorts of meetings behind, yeah. that, yes, but he behind doesn't, that door. He doesn't notice. Or he doesn't seem to. Right. Yeah, he don't care in the end. And he doesn't have an opinion on the food, right? He's just going out to fucking hang yeah, out. Yeah, no, he never said he it. I mean, shit. I looked up the menu beforehand. I was like, I got to order the right thing. Yeah. I know he hates really? vegetarians. I was trying to like, <laughs> hide the fact that I was a vegetarian. You're a vegetarian. All right, I'm going to get into that in a second. But uh, tell the rest of the Bourdain. So then you, just, you guys just hit it off. So then he just said, do you want to write a book and I was like um, yeah I guess and uh, then I said I, I would you know a book of essays and he was like no just write about your life so then I did and I that why was, did he that think that's awesome that he didn't know anything about it really and he just suggested a book yeah I don't know he just thought he, he kept saying I've never met a woman that has the voice like yours you know like a outlook or right. whatever um, but I was like, you've only ever heard me on the roast. Yeah. You know, am I supposed to just walk around being mean to people? Well, that's pretty You cool. are. Oh, I am. That's right. <laughs> oh, what do you order? Um, I don't remember now what I ordered. So okay. Stupid. How long did it take you to write it? Um, about a year and a half. Wow. And okay. then, uh, it took like a, about, about a, half a year for the editing and then a oh, year wow, wow. from oh, when I like finished. I finished it like a year ago. Now it's gone. And have you? Did you speak to Anthony Bourdain a lot through the process? No, oh. I 
I I did some writing. I did a little bit of writing for him. On like, he's like, I know she's a vegetarian. (laughs) On the side, yeah. (laughs) And then um, he he invited Rich and I on his show. We did his show, uh, Parts Unknown, New Jersey. Oh, yeah, that show was great. Oh God, I was so nervous about him meeting Rich. I was like, (laughs) Do not ruin this for me. Um, you think he liked them though? You think he yeah, liked Rich? They, yeah. I mean, they got Rich can be very charming. Oh, Rich yeah, is very Rich is charming. Good. Rich can be a very was, charming. No, yeah. he really is. I, was, he is. I swear, I was sweating buckets. I yeah. was just, I couldn't. Don't fuck this up. Oh, and was God. he okay? He was good. Well, because you know, when you're around people that can help you or, or that are helping you, I don't know. I just always, I, I, I have a hard time with that. Like, yes, right, right. I like just leave the room. I can't. It's a weird power shift in when a person is helping you, even though they're trying to be nice and they don't want it to be that way. It's just this weird, like, oh, they're helping me. Yeah. Out there. <laughs> I don't want to trip you. You're self conscious about everything you say. Yeah. I didn't see the Jersey one. What did you guys do for Bourdain? We just went to some, I don't know what the restaurant was. Do you know what kind of food you had? Yeah, we had pizza. Oh, you want or pizza? no, I had pizza. Rich had some pasta, something. Okay, it's an Italian place. Yeah, uh, I gotta go Good back guess. and check that. Good out. guess, Chris. Jesus Could Christ! <laughs> when, is your, when is your when is your idea show starting? <laughs> 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 this guy really gets to the bottom of things. <laughs> I had uh, lo mein. Yeah. And, uh, what do you think that was? Japanese. <laughs> but um, it's it's a hell of a story and a really really good book. I, I love the fact that you started your life on just a small. F- Small, we were small, really out of pathetically the... poor. Did you remember all of it, or did you have to go back? Like, how, how did you? Because I look at the life. I can. Remember, I have four memories from my life. How do you go back? Well, and... I wasn't yeah. molested, but um... <laughs> <laughs> well, if you were cuter, <laughs> I know. That hair. <laughs> um, no, I. Well, my mom helped me with the because I wrote a lot of my parents how they met. They, you know. It's it's a kind of interesting story, and then uh, so she helped me with the early days of. Oh, so you did ask your family like for memories and help and stuff like that, and then you. Yeah, a okay. little bit. And yeah, then, how did your parents meet again? Well, everyone in Saskatchewan eventually meets everyone else. Uh, so, but my my father uh, initially at a dance tried to date my mother's sister. Oh. And uh, she turned him down. She's now, she's, you know, subsequent, she's married to another woman now, so. Oh, okay. Oh, but good. Years later, he got his, uh, he was, you know, relieved to hear that. Uh, then it all made sense more <laughs> yeah, exactly. finally. No wonder she could resist this. So, <laughs> so then he, um, so then he dated my mom. I mean, that's like... <laughs> And it's a and oh, and very then, small and then, town and a, and a farm, a farm on a very, in a very small town. Yeah. And yeah. You, and you made it to New York City and uh, have a <laughs> hell of a career goal for yourself. Yeah. They're a delightful family, the McFarlane's. Yeah. Yeah. You went up there for the uh, wedding. I met them. Yeah. Uh, but there was no like uh, plumbing really or. No, we had to um, uh, shit in a uh, can. I mean, it has a, it's like a big can and it has a toilet seat thing on it. On a it. can? Yeah, I mean, like a big that like doesn't, a barrel can. You're and not then, old enough for that and then, to be yeah. telling that story. I, it is true. And then the, my dad would have to take it out. I know, I grew up in the 1800s. My grandma so. would tell that story. Yes, yes. And, and if she was alive, she'd be 106 today. Well, you know what's funny is that I, I, I didn't tell people these stories for a long time. I was embarrassed about it. There was a lot of shame. Um, but now I realize like nobody grew up the way I did. No, like, yes, it's, it's rare. Not like very that, interesting. You know? How long did you shit in the can for? Um, I don't remember when we got the well. Uh, so, <laughs> well, yes, we're, not, yes. we're not talking to an 85-year-old woman. No. I, know, I, know. I don't remember when we got the well. Who says this is a that? fairy tale? Right. <laughs> so then we got a well, and uh, but you still had to be very, very uh, cautious about how much water you used because if the well went sure. dry, it took a long time to prime it and get it going again. And pe- you'd get re- you'd get yelled at. But before the well, we'd melt snow on the stove. We had electricity, okay. and uh, you'd melt the snow, and then you'd take a bath. And the my mom would. Uh, this is crazy. Wait, That's that was smart. how you would to take a bath. You'd melt snow. You took bath in snow water. Yep. Yeah, and and also we only had a bath once a week, and then the rest of the time was like you know whore baths or whatever you'd call it. Wow. Oh, in the sink. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's a name for that. 
Yeah. I'm sure it has a different name for Why, that. Why? What is it called? <laughs> I'm not saying it. What is it? I, I don't know it. Uh, no, I'm not saying it. Isn't it called a whore bath? Well, I, I've heard that. I've heard a Puerto Rican bath. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. Puerto Rican shower. Oh, yeah. Puerto Rican shower I've yeah. heard over the years. Well, I'm proud to have that connection to the Puerto Ricans. <laughs> yeah. Melting <laughs> snow. That, I've, that's amazing to me. That's the whole genius. thing is amazing. And then, like, who took care of the shit bucket? And what'd you do in the summer? My dad would... Yeah. Well, you'd go to the outhouse as much as possible but you know at night it was cold and it was you know dark so so you would but my dad then would take it out somewhere i don't know where he took it i didn't my curiosity was never peaked enough to go find out where that shit pile you never was. asked where you taking the shit no. bucket so <laughs> no. i don't play in that area but i do remember my sister uh shat in the toilet one or in the uh, bathtub once and it was oh such God. drama because you know yeah. now we had to start the process all over right. again getting the snow <laughs> the did, snow. You, <laughs> did you at least have wood floors um i think we did i mean we in the basement in the first house it was like the dirt floors and, dirt, dirt uh, floors yeah and then and then we had another house where the floor there was a piece of the floor would be pulled up like uh i can't explain it so there was a, a rug over it and then you take the rug off and there was like a little handle and you'd pull literally like this big square part out of the floor yeah. and then there was stairs and you go down there and it was the that was like from the hateful eight yeah oh yeah so yeah. I didn't see it, but, and then we would play down there, there was like carpet over Dirt, and we would play down there with our dolls and carpet stuff. over dirt. <laughs> yes. How was that in the winter? How cold was that oh downstairs? Oh my god, <laughs> I don't it's remember. I don't remember being Actually, cold. Actually, probably was pretty warm if it was underground, it yeah. probably wasn't that bad. But well, you know, I kept all our like is uh, that where you canning, your... and you know, uh, my uh, mom made like t just an enormous amount of like you know, pickles and canned uh, canned and vegetables and even canned chicken, which is disgusting. That is crazy. What an interesting yeah. life that is. And how, how, yeah, how, how old were you when you get yeah. out of there? Um, well, it, it's so then we moved to this house, and then my dad got cancer, and we lost that farm and the house because my dad was like, you know. Who took out the shit bucket during that time? Well, we had running water in that oh, house. Oh, that's good. Mm, okay. yeah. So how old were you when you finally had running water? So that was when I was about seven or eight. And then, okay. um, but then we had to move again because my dad lost that farm. Mm. And, and we just kept, you know. I mean, and there was a time you guys would kill your food, right? Yes. I um, On the, the next farm that we had, um, it was my job. So now I'm like, you know, 9, 10, 11. And um, I don't know why I vo you could volunteer for the job. It would be like you could either catch the chickens after their heads have come off because they would run around. Or you could. When you let them just collapse, why do you have to catch the yeah. damn thing well, while it's running around without a head on it? You have to go collect on them. I you mean, eat them. You no, know, I know, but let them just fucking, you know, collapse. Okay, yeah. so you didn't, so you didn't that, that's really... That's creepy. Now you're running after a chicken that has no head. <laughs> yes, you, don't, you didn't really run after but you would have to go and get them wherever yeah. they landed. But they could go far. I, I so it was would, like a pain in the ass. Look, I, I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you kill something. And then I don't, I don't know why, know how because... how you do it. And I know there's a lot of people that do that out there. Will kill a chicken. No I problem. think it uh. did something inside. Do you, do you really? <laughs> yes. Because you get that. Because I've I've been seeing a lot of I don't know movies about veg, you know farming and all that shit yeah. lately, and the, and it's always the family that kills their food, and it creeps me out because they always talk about how these animals are their pets for a while. And then now they're well, just basically I killing their pet. I don't think so. I mean, any farm people that I've ever met, you, there's a very big distinction between your pets and your and you don't. And we food. weren't allowed to name the animals no, that the, you were going to kill. No, the stuff I've been seeing. The, I saw uh, Cowspiracy recently, and they go to this one farm and they're talking about like they name and they're naming some of the chickens and the pigs or whatever. And then next thing you know, they got to you know kill them for their food. I, that's, that's creepy to me. Yeah, well, we weren't allowed to name them. Okay. I was that, just looking as you're talking. I'm just looking like through her book. Yeah. And there's a part about doing your first letterman. I'm like, I really want to read this. It's a, it's a uh, very fucking... good. This is a very good book. Yeah. No joke. I mean, it's there is real. Jokes. <laughs> no, there's a oh, lot yeah, of jokes yeah. in it. But I mean, it's a great story because you started with nothing and and uh, and really really made something. I went from poor to broke. That's where I'm at. Right. Yeah. But it's a really. Uh, but what do you mean that killing story. killing chickens like did something to you? Was it chickens that you mostly had to kill? 
Yes, I mean, I watched my dad kill cows. Kill cows? Yeah. How'd he do it? Like Shoot him in the head. Oh, wow. Oh, well, like that air gun from um, No Country for Old Men? You ever seen that? Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. Is that it was what, a was rifle. A bullet? Oh, so, okay. Why did he kill the cows? D didn't to, political to disagreement. <laughs> yes. No, he butchered his own... He butchered... They were going to vote for Trump. No. <laughs> no, I understand all that. But usually it's somebody comes and takes your cows and go to the slaughterhouse, but he was he was butchering his own cows? Oh, yeah. Everyone did around there. What the fuck? Really? Yeah. And then you'd go because the neighbor had the um, the the area of, I don't know, all the equipment to grind the beef and, um, you know, package it and stuff. So, you you know, there there would be like a, a cow hanging in our garage for 28 days. Did it ever go bad or no? I guess you, you... No, you have to age it for 28 days. After, oh, you don't just kill it and eat it? No, you got to like hang it. Why? Why? I don't know. That's you just kill the way. it and then I don't hang know it, all the, the reasons why things. <laughs> no, would but happen. don't flies land on it and stuff? Or do you cover it? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't think they were covered. They were in the garage. Was it in the winter? Uh, winter, spring. Oh yeah. wow! So you have a uh, you have memories of the cows just hanging in your garage for twenty eight days? Yes. That's and then and then you would go fucking deal. And then you would go and you would have to like you know you know like they'd have like a saw or something Ugh. and they would cut it up and you know. And you right. used to watch that. Yes, and then yeah. well, I'd have to help. You'd have to help wrap it or like grind it or whatever. Here's like, why they do it. So uh, it's, it, it, the enzymes like break down the muscle, so then the, oh. it tastes better. Oh, so it's a more tender. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's yeah. more edible. Okay. So uh, yeah, and then you'd have like then you'd have all these like wow. packages, you know, of cow, and then you'd put them in your freezer. And then Must all winter, it, you have your... I'm sure it tasted delicious, but fuck, I'm a pussy. I, I wouldn't be I able to do that. I wouldn't be able to do that But if you were raised that. with it, you might. Like, that, that's no, all you saw saying, as a kid. I'm sorry, Jimmy. But she's saying it affected her. Well, the, the, the cow didn't... I don't think... See, here's the thing, is that when you're on a... When you grow up on a farm, you really do learn, like, the cycle of life, you know? I mean, you're eating meat, and you just... You don't even know where it comes from. That's right. the difference. People always say, oh, you're a vegetarian because um, you had to kill animals. Um, I'm probably more of a vegetarian because I uh, don't know where the animals come from. Like, I might not be a vegetarian if I was still killing my own meat. Right. I, because right. then you know where it comes from. You know, you know, you've that's the cycle of life. Like, that's how we are as humans. We eat meat. We sure. kill it. You know, since Russell Simmons was in here uh, promoting Happy Vegan, I haven't eaten any beef whatsoever. I've been ordering it and then just taking one bite and throwing the rest out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Something about the beef. I chew it and spit it out. <laughs> something about the beef. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm kind of over right now i don't I, I think i'll eat steak here and there from you know but well isn't it one of the reasons why the ozone is 